I graduated from St. Paul School in 39 and uh, applied and was accepted by MIT. I, I went in for, for electrical engineering. Uh, at that time, uh, electronics were just beginning. Uh, I can show you how beginning it was. In that showcase, there's a little basic diode, which I had to build to pass the course. And it works. The next summer, however, we could sense the war coming. Uh, being in Boston, Cambridge, reading the Boston Globe every morning, uh, we could see that German submarines were sinking ships offshore. And you read the headlines of these tankers and other convoy ships being sunk. Uh, and so, you know, to us students, it was just inevitable that we're going to be getting into this war sooner or later. Uh, what can we do about it now? Nothing. We just sat and waited to see what happened. So, however, I decided that I'd like to get a job for the, that summer of 41 uh, with something that would pay a little bit more than shoveling manure in the stables. And I did get a job as a, in the summer as a stock clerk at Grumman Aircraft Factory on Long Island. So it was easy. I could commute back and forth. And I always remember Gasoline at that time was six gallons to a dollar. Uh, Grumman at that time were making the F-3Fs uh, fighter planes for the Navy and also for the British Navy. And also this was the year that the first torpedo bomber, the SPD, came out. Uh, so I made enough money to pay for quite a few books and help out the education at MIT. So it came December 7th, 1941. Uh, I was in the dorm at MIT. And I, we heard the news of Pearl Harbor. And by that time, I was already so-called in the Navy. I was then a junior. Just started my junior year. And the Navy in September, uh, they had been sort of locked out of MIT to get students or to get graduates because MIT was, uh, I guess they called like a land grant college. They had ROTC and it was all Army. I mean, there are four or five different Army departments very much vying for MIT students. The ROTC enrollment was mandatory for our first two years of college. So all of us were in ROTC, Army ROTC. Anyway, we learned how to march and how to uh, carry guns and a few things like that. So then, <coughs> uh, so it came December 7th, we heard the news on the radio about Pearl Harbor. And the, everybody whooped it up, said, well, now we know what we're going to do. At least I did. Because by then, I already had my commission as, a, uh, as an ensign. But it was a, what is known as a probationary commission. Um, the probationary part of it was that I had to graduate in order for the commission to become active. And so the so the good way for the Navy not to have to pay for my education. <laughs> but, uh, but I took it anyway. Anyway, I was sure of a job, which is just as good as getting paid. In 43, and a week later, I, had, I, I just wrote a short note to the Navy saying, OK, I've graduated. And I'm at home, such and such address. Uh, are you going to send me orders? Question mark. About a day later, 
day and a half later, I get the longest telegram I've ever seen in my life. But it outlined my Navy life of follow a year and a half. <laughs> All the places they were going to send me. First thing was two months at Fort Schuyler in New York for our basic training. Mm -hmm. Stassen was in my class there. <laughs> After that, I was sent back to Harvard. I should say back, but to Harvard University for three months of electronic um, schooling. Then another three months at MIT, back to MIT for more actually radar training. And this was not held on the main campus. It was held on a, in a um, warehouse type building at the, on the harbor. Uh, we call it the harbor building. And uh, uh, of course, it was classified secret. And, uh, but anybody who wanted to know what was going on, they could see all these Navy uniforms going in in the morning and coming out at night. They could, they could find out easy enough. During that time, uh, interestingly enough, microwave radar came in. Uh, with the invention of the magnetron, which is now the source of all power in um, microwave cooking. <laughs> and, uh, but this was super secret device in those days. From there, they sent me to Corpus Christi, Texas uh, for another two months. <laughs> 